Hello there everyone and welcome back to another video and as you can see I have the Wise Windturm CX0 No, this is the SX0, the CX0 is the one I'm not going to get for reasons or another on my desk because I'm going to be making some hardware and software changes for it In the last video I believe I mentioned I put a 512 megabyte um, 44 pin IDE flash disk on module limit although I have now a very similar model 2 gigabyte ID flash module for it, which is hopefully going to allow me to get Windows XP embedded all up and running on this properly. Now, I have already built an image of Windows XP embedded and got it on the um, hard drive of my server. In fact, I'm going to try and open it in Microsoft Target Designer now so we can see what it looks like to build an image. Now, while this is loading, for some reason this program takes a really long time to load, even on the dual Xeon system with 30 gigs of RAM. But yeah, I have Windows XP embedded, well I had, I can't remember if I formatted this drive or not, on this 512 meg drive, and it ran okay. I was having some trouble getting it validated though, I couldn't figure out how you're actually supposed to put the key in that I purchased, so I kept getting the, um, this is only an evaluation copy of Windows and would expire 90 days after its first use notification in the target designer when I tried to build the image. Because unlike normal installations of Windows XP, you don't insert a disk or bootable flash drive, you build an image of Windows XP embedded with the components and features that you want, and then you copy it to the drive of... actually no, wrong order. Firstly, you run, um, I think it's tap.exe is the name, and that essentially fingerprints the computer, gets information about all of your hardware. So to do that, I had to install Micro Windows XP to this 512 module, then transfer that file over, then run tap, then transfer the devices.pmq file it generated back to my server so I could generate all of the hardware um, instances. Then I had to add all of the additional features and components I wanted. Check for dependencies, just basically um, tells you, you know, if you're missing anything important. Then you build the image which copies all of the files, the file structure of the C drive to a folder on the computer that you're running target design on. Then what you have to do, or what I had to do in this case, was download a specific version of Tiny Core Linux with a modified kernel, because for some reason on this particular machine, um, the IDE controller gets marked as disabled by default by pretty much every Linux distribution I've tried on here, meaning that a modified kernel is required to fix that. And from pretty much the only website I was able to find online that has any kind of documentation and information about this machine, go away. Um, they were using Tiny Core, I believe it was 8.2.6 for the modified VM liners file, so that's what I used. Then had to install PC Man FM, Gparted, and the Gparted NTFS plugin, format the drive, reformat it as NTFS, copy the files over, and mark the drive as boot. Now that sounds like a lot of steps, although on any normal computer this would only take around 20 minutes. On this, <laughs> with a single core 366 megahertz AMD geode that really doesn't like doing anything even remotely modern, it took an awful lot longer because initially I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Although I have now got the target designer figured out and now it has loaded, I'll just quickly show the user friend of Do you like my new monitor by the way? It's much nicer than that HP L1710 I've been using, going from a 1024 by, um, no, 1280 by 1024 to a 1600 by 1200 monitor was definitely nice. So this is all the stuff that makes up an installation of Windows XP embedded. And if we go into my D drive, Windows embedded images, yep, this is the folder that it dumps all of its files to when you go to the configuration tab and select build target image. That props up this box, as you can see. Go to D Windows Embed. Why am I still on the default administrator account? That's a really dumb thing. Anyway, that's where it dumps it. So what I'm going to do now, well, firstly, I'm going to get this disassembled by grabbing my screwdrivers. I'm going to try and do this without turning the camera off. Because if I keep turning the camera off, people are going to find my videos incredibly uninteresting. I mean, they may find them uninteresting anyway. Just kind of rest my hand here. Insert the screwdriver. If I could remember how to undo a screw, that's how you do it. I'm going to invest in one of those phone 
tripod mounts and a tripod so I can actually prop this up while I'm doing things. Because remember, while you are starting a YouTube channel, which is what I'm definitely doing, it's okay to use your phone for videoing. Although, if, when or more likely if this channel actually decides to progress to something more than about four people want to follow, I will invest in a camcorder. So here is the A-Pacer 512 megabyte flash module. Here is the new A-Pacer 2 gigabyte module. As you can see, they are pretty much identical apart from... Um, the capacity and this one having an additional chip on top I would assume that's gonna be another Samsung chip as this uses yep that's a Samsung module and so is that there's the North Bridge that might be the South Bridge maybe the North Bridge is integrated into the CPU I don't know either the North Bridge or South Bridge for the AMD Geo chipset now I'm just gonna get this plugged in there we go get this top cover back on. Now none of the other hardware in here we need to change because I've already got 512 megs of RAM installed in this thing which the maximum will support um, and other than RAM other, other than RAM and um, the IDE flash disk on module there really isn't anything you can actually change about this and since I've already got those pretty much upgraded the way I want them there really isn't any need to change them I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I did try and install... I cannot get the screw on the end of my screwdriver one-handed. There we go. I did try putting a one gigabyte module in here. It absolutely did not have it. The computer refused to even post. It just sat there giving me a blinking cursor. So, um, I don't know if there's a custom BIOS that will remove that limitation, or if it's a chipset limitation. I don't really see the point even if there was, which I know for a fact there isn't, I don't even have to look. Even if there was, I don't really see the point as this CPU struggles to perform well even with 512 megs of RAM. Right, I'm going to set this 512 meg off to the side and begin the annoying process of um, creating the Linux image and copying the files to it. So I'll be back shortly once I've done that. Alright, so I've now got everything loaded onto that USB flash drive. I've got Tiny Core Linux with the modified kernel and the Windows XP embedded files to copy over, so now I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on and see what it does. Oh, this power cable is really fiddly. Back in a second. Let's try that again. Beep. Monitor is providing... Hey, there we go, boot tiny corn, slow devices. Right, so that's going to go ahead and load, and I will be back once we have reached the Linux desktop. Right, we are here on the Tiny Core desktop. I'm going to waste no time, and I'm going to try and install the apps I need. So, providing my server has decided to behave and provide this with the internet connection I told it to, which is hit and miss sometimes. Nope, it hasn't. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to turn it off and do it all again. I really hate it when it does this. I really, really do. It's just going to hang there now and then say network error. Right, this is what it should have done. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing all of the um, plugins I need. So this is the NTFS plugin for Gpartit that I'm going to require. And it's all right. That's done. Bring up Gpartit here. Gpartit.tcz, and now I just do the same thing for. PC Man FM, and it brings up this kind of cool terminal windowy thing. Right, so I'll be back once all this is done. Right, so while I wait for this to install, here is some information about the processor in this machine. It identifies itself as a geode integrated processor by National Semi. I would assume that's going to be something National Con Semiductors. National Con Semiductors. National Semiconductors. 365.222 MHz, 32 kilobytes of cache. I'm assuming that'd be level 2. FPU exception, blah, 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 blah. There's some more information here if you want to pause the video and uh, read this. I'll grab some memory information. Memory total. So, in case, if you want to read any of this, you can just pause the video. Net. Nothing really interesting there. Modules, floppy loading, processes, mounts, file systems, boot. Yeah, nothing really interesting there. Anyway, this is now finished, so I'm going to go ahead and 
open the terminal, type sudo su, so I can type gparted and have it launch without saying, oh no, you need to be logged in as root because gparted can destroy literally everything on your hard drive. I say that mockingly, but that is genuinely something it can do, so I can kind of understand having to run it as root, although when running as root, it's just as easy as typing sudo su, it kind of defeats the point. Okay, so it looks like this 2 gigabyte part um, disk has indeed still got my old installation Windows XP embedded on it. I'm going to delete that, because that will be the um, trial version, so just make it as big as I can. Format it, NTFS, label, SX, okay, SX0. Going to add that as our partition, apply. Yes, I'm sure I want to apply depending operations. Right, as we can see by the mount tool built into um, Tiny Core Linux here, which has now gone unmoved, STB0 marked in green is my USB drive, which is good. And once I do, I can't remember how I do this, is it? Oh, it's going to do stuff. Once I mark this partition as bootable, by right clicking, Manage flags, check boot, so that will tell the computer that it can boot from the drive. I can mount SDA1 and copy the contents of my USB flash drive, well, the Windows Embedded contents, to SDA1. I don't have to apply it, so go ahead and mount that now. Open up PCMan FM, which is a really great lightweight um, file manager for computers like this. I can't drag the window down, I'm going to have to adjust the height in which I'm holding the phone. Right, SDB1, Windows Embedded Images. Now this is literally all you have to do to get it copied over, just select them all. Copy, SDA1, and paste. And now it's going to go ahead and begin copying. So I will be back once that is done and we can see what this thing is like on its first boot. Right, the copy is done and the system is shutting down. The system has now shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the drive and hope I did everything correctly. Let's go. See what the monitor happens to do. Well, it's getting a signal and that is the Windows XP embedded startup slidey thing. And oh, it's offset. That's really... Oh, that's just a monitor sync issue. That was quick. Why is it all the way over there? <laughs> um, interesting fact, if you've ever installed Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009 or Windows F... I'm gonna... There we go. If you've ever installed Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009 or Windows FLP, Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, uh, the setup screen after the initial setup um, finishes, and what I mean by that, after the CD finishes copying files and it boots from its own hard disk for the first time, you don't get the nice, pretty Windows XP setup thing, you just get a window here that says, window there, that says first boot agent, and it does a bunch of stuff, just a bunch of progress bars going up and down, up and down. That is what this does, as you can see here, this weird resetting setup flag thing. I've no idea what that means, I must have seen that screen a bunch of times. Anyway, there really is nothing interesting to see here or say about this. Um, actually, while this does its stuff, and while the exposure goes way out of whack because of the way I'm holding this, I will take the time to tell you about something interesting that Wise offered their customers of the Winterm SX Zeros back in the day. Um, if Um, hello. System license violation, what? Okay then. Might be time for some research. Alright, so taking a look at this blue screen more closely, we can see stop 0 
x nine a and then this column here it says zero x zero blah 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 four. Well, I've pulled up a Microsoft page here that has details about this focus. 0x04, it says the status code that is associated with the key lookup failure. The system prefix value from the setup key is missing. So that sounds like I'm going to have to go back in to target designer and change it. Although actually, I'm just going to do this because it's already plugged in. Jules Eon, connect, please. Initiating remote connection, securing remote connection. Let us go, let us go, let us go. I'm surprised filming on a glossy screen is going as well as it is. Although my computer is being really, really fussy about doing things today. So this may not work. No, it appears to have worked. At least it's gone away somewhere. No, I just minimized it. All right, I'll be, okay. No. Oh, fuck off. Yes, it is. It's turned on. Why are you not doing this? Okay, I'm going to just plug everything back in. So apparently the Microsoft Windows operating system has detected a violation of the software license agreement. A user might have tried to change the product type of an offline system or change the trial period of an evaluation unit of Windows. I have... I honestly don't know. I'm gonna have to do some more. Well, I am slightly annoyed right now. Turns out the fuckers on eBay sent me a dodgy key for Windows XP Embedded, which is why that error kept popping up. I've purchased a new key that seems to be from a reputable or more reputable seller. It looks like it's an OEM key. It said it was made for some A open machine, but Windows keys aren't actually device specific. They're just distributed under the OEM Act. Any key will genuinely, generally, I always get those words mixed up, activate any version of Windows. So I've blanked out the key for now, and I'm just going to test this on the evaluation version. And then if the key comes today, I'll um, rebuild the image using that and include it in this video. And if it doesn't, then I will just probably squeeze it in as an update in another video whether or not this happened to work. So I'm going to have to rebuild this and get it on the... Um, thin client and have endless amounts of fun doing something I only wanted to do once. But I can't do that because I got scammed because I'm a dumb idiot. Alright, so a little bit of time has passed since my last clip. I have since eaten and done a few other things. As you can see, I now have the evaluation copy of Windows XP embedded running on the SX0 down here. Installation process took a really long time. But anyway, I got the uh, Lunar theme installed. Uh, there is some very jerky mouse movements. That's not in the video, that's actually the mouse. I'm assuming it's because this has no drivers. Because I could not find drivers for um, this chipset. They just frankly don't seem to exist, or they're buried so much that no normal person could ever hope to find them. Anyway, I'm having some troubles getting Service Pack 1 on here. It keeps moaning about the cryptographic service not running, even though it is, and I restarted it and deleted some registry keys like a forum post told me to. Oh, bunch of crap like that. Overall, I mean, it's running about as well as you'd expect, and I think I might venture to um, keep Windows XP embedded on here. There's the... Windows hardware roster, if anybody cares. So we've got a Geo integrated processor by National Semi, 365 megahertz, 496 megs of RAM, because I believe it's taking 16 for its video memory that I can't get drives installed for. Um, I've looked in the system display properties window, and this is either a limitation of the chipset itself or the fact I don't have drivers. When I try to go up to 1600 by 900, it drops me down to 16 bit color. If I want to go 32, it takes it back to 12, 8 by 10, 12, 16 by, 1600 by 1200. Let's go 12, 8 by 10, 24. And that happens. But it does bring me to the correct resolution. Alright, so I believe I have got a very good excuse to automatically adjust my monitor because that is blurry as hell. Come on, right. 
So I'm trying to install the windows. Oh yeah, there's a reason I turned that off. It's because this thing has no drivers, and if it did, I imagine they probably wouldn't make the video performance much better than it is now. Right, appearance. Just wait for it to take 50 years to load. Come on. Oh, it's not responding. Brilliant. Anyway, so yeah, I have managed to get Windows XP running. I'm going to experiment around a bit more with target designer, adding and removing things to see if I can get, um, like, things like Service Pack 1 to install. But anyway, I think I've dragged this video out long enough. I thank you for watching. If anything interesting comes of this machine, I will probably put it as an update at the end of one of my future videos. I do plan on making one more video on another Wise Winterm Thin Client. It's going to be similar to the WT1200LE model, although it's the slightly upgraded version. In fact, I think it's just directly the model newer. Anyway, I thank you for watching. If you have a comment, feel free to leave it and subscribe if you enjoyed the channel.